So, in the last couple of days of our drive to Alaska, we noticed that the camper was leaning a little bit to the driver's side. And if you remember from our earlier videos, we had a little accident. We thought maybe that was what was causing it, but come to find out it wasn't. We actually, uh, upon arriving and doing some inspection, we found that at least one of the rubber shear bushings for the Moride independent suspension was completely separated from the metal backing plate. So I'll show you here in a little bit what it looks like, but basically you've got a piece of rubber in between two plates of metal and they're supposed to be bonded. And on this particular wheel, it's not bonded and it's completely separated. We actually are pretty fortunate that that failure did not cause our other tires to be overloaded and blow out. And I think one of the reasons why they didn't blow out and they weren't too overloaded is because we have really good Goodyear tires on the trailer instead of some some of the less uh, lesser quality tires that generally come with travel trailers or, or motorhomes. So uh, a lesson to everybody out there is if, make sure you have good quality tires because when something breaks, your chances of survival are much higher. Uh, I recently read another story about a a fifth wheel that had a similar thing happen and because it overloaded the tire that was next to the failed one it blew out and then caused several thousand dollars worth of damage to the trailer itself so we were really fortunate what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, we're going to go ahead and pull the tire off we're going to look at what we got going on and then we're going to pull that spring off or that bushing off and we're going to replace it with a new bushing that Moride sent us under warranty so hopefully it should go fairly smooth. At the end of the day, it's really only four bolts that hold it on. Uh, the issue that we might run into is the fact that you got to play with a jack and jack stance and trying to re remove the tension from it. Um, actually, right now there's probably not much tension on it at all because it's completely broken, but putting the new one in there is probably going to be a little bit difficult. So the first thing we're going to do is take the tire off, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, look at our situation and see what we're dealing with and we're gonna start taking it apart and then put it back together hopefully this all goes rather smoothly if you look over here you can see that i've kind of set up for this project um it's been raining and we're on a gravel pad so i go ahead and br uh, broke out the the tarp so that i'm not rolling around in the mud and the dirt and i've got an electric impact gun because i don't carry a compressor with enough horsepower to deal with uh, pneumatic guns so that's going to take the uh, the wheel off uh, when I was setting up if you can see over there you see I put bigger blocks underneath the jacks to make sure that I can get those tires off the ground so what we did is we actually used the hydraulic leveling system to lift those tires off the ground I'm going to remove one tire now uh, hopefully that'll be enough I don't want to remove both because I like the comfort level of having that extra tire there should something happen disastrous uh, I'm also going to throw a jack stand or two under there just because you never know when something fails, and when you've got 15,000 pounds of trailer sitting over you while you're working, uh, I would hate for that failure to cause a piece of that trailer to fall on me. So I'm going to go ahead and use not only the wheel that's on there, but I'm going to use jack stands, and then I'm going to use the jack to remove the pressure on the suspension while I deal with getting this bushing out and then back in. Uh, so hopefully this goes pretty smoothly. We'll see how it goes. First thing up, I'm going to take the take the tire off with the electric impact gun. Should be fairly simple, straightforward. Um, you don't have to have an electric impact gun, but they really help out and they make the job much faster. So, well, let's see what we got. I'll go ahead and leave the camera running just because you might see something. I don't know, or you might not, or we might cut it all out when we actually go to edit this video. So here we go, taking the wheel off and then moving from there. So, not really anything big there, it's just removing the tire. Um, if you didn't have an impact gun, you would have wanted to go ahead and do that. Um, break the lug nuts loose before you actually started dealing with it. Let's go ahead and see if we can get a, a shot of what we're dealing with here. So, as you see there, or maybe see there, you see how that bushing is all separated from that metal plate right there? 
those are supposed to be lined up nice and evenly and bolted to it but that's complete separation there which is what caused our failure if we look over here you can see maybe let me get a light so if you look over here I know the lighting is poor but we'll see what we can do you see how that spring is all nice and uh, tight and together that's actually a bushing I guess that's what it's supposed to look like and because the other one was completely failed as you see up here where it is completely separated nowhere near what it's supposed to be that other axle has been carrying pretty much the most of the load which oftentimes causes things to fail so now our challenge is to pull this out of here and then what we're going to do is replace it with a new one Let's go ahead and see if we can get that done. So you can see I threw a, a jack stand up underneath. Well, maybe you can see it. I don't know if you can see it from there. But anyways, I threw a jack stand underneath the axle. And I put two lug nuts on the lug so I didn't screw up the threads as I kind of jacked this up to relieve the pressure. Jacked it up to relieve the pressure on it. And now I'm going to go ahead and pull the nuts out, the bolts out, and see what happens. I also moved my tarp further under. So... I don't have to get all dirty. And you might notice I'm using two end wrenches. And the reason why I'm using two end wrenches is because there's not really that much space here. So ratchet and socket might be a little bit tight. So what you'll see here, once I get this thing out of here, is that we've got two rubber bushings and you see how this one here is nicely bonded between these two plates of steel well that's supposed to be the same situation between you see that this one right here is supposed to be bonded right there but apparently it failed and you can see that there's a big old tear there where it failed so that's the reason why we're replacing this now I am going to go ahead and Chuck that one aside, and what I'm going to do before I replace it, or maybe even after it, is I'm going to go ahead and separate these because they come in bushing pairs, and in an emergency, I can go ahead and use this one to, re to replace another one that fails if it happens, you know, while we're down the road somewhere. This right here is what a good one's supposed to look like. You see how it's all bonded together in one piece? The plates are actually part of the plastic or bonded to the plastic or rubber. So this is what it's supposed to look like. This is the new one that's going back on. Which I'm sure will be fun to put back on there. I don't know if you've ever tried to take apart and put together stuff like this, but trying to get it back together is always an adventure. So we'll see how we go. Alright, so after struggling with this thing for a little bit, I actually downloaded and read the instructions. And realized that because it was broken when it came apart, uh, I was able to get it out without taking... Uh, one of the bolts loose that needed to come loose. Cam, no. There's the dog bumping the camera because he's an <laughs> attention whore. So anyways, the bolt that holds this whole axle in, and you can see how it slides in and out now. I loosened it up so I can get some more room, and I believe that's going to give us the room that we need in order to install this thing. So now I'm going to go ahead and loosely bolt it up to the spring hanger and then proceed to try to get it all lined up and actually on there. The first thing we do, the sucker up here. Of course, I forgot we need to get these started because the rubber prevents them from just pushing through. So, well, maybe we can this one. So, we got one in there. Yeah, I'm just going to hang it up here. So I can get the rest in. Of course, I'm doing this blind. One in there. Put that on it. And now with that in place, I should be able to put the other four bolts in there and then proceed forward. So maybe this will go together better. Now, what you missed is an hour, an hour and a half of struggling trying to get this thing together.
rubber in these holes makes it a pain in the butt. But instead of just shoving through, you should actually end up having to screw them in. I guess I could take a hammer and beat on it, but I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> what? Are you enjoying this? Is it, um, watching this, filming the show. For you. I was just using the tripod, <laughs> but I got kind of pissy about it because it was in my way and it wasn't taking good video. And truth be told, I kind of felt like Candace was slacking inside, enjoying the nice warmth and everything while I'm out here <laughs> screwing around with this. So now she's out here. I was not. I was in there waiting on the water to build up, guys, because yeah. I was washing my hair and it ran out. I had to get out of the shower, put my robe on, and wait for the water to build back up. I still had soap in my hair. That water was freezing. <laughs> All right, so we've got the four bolts holding it onto the actual frame in there, and we've got the one bolt holding it onto the the uh, end beam assembly. And now we're going to go ahead, and as it says. Jack and hammer, jack and hammer, jack and hammer until we get it into place. Not sure how this is gonna go. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, so Cam, yeah, really? Hey, I'm filming here, buddy dog. It's Cam bumping my shoulder. No, right now his head just sitting on my leg. Mm. All right, you can pause it for a second. All right. So the procedure to get these bolts back in here is to jack it up and bang away at a hammer to get the friction to allow it to move. Um, one of the things I noticed is that the metal was sticking together, so I went ahead and sprayed it down pretty pretty thoroughly with some lubricant. Hopefully this will help out, and let's do it again. I've been jacking it and banging it. I tried to get the jack underneath where it said to go ahead and do it. It's preferred location, but I can't fit it in there. So now I'm almost to where we can get that second screw in, second bolt in. Difficult to tell, but we might be there. I think. Oh, there goes the second bolt. Mm. Woo! Woo Success. So there's the second bolt in. So now we've got six of eight in. <laughs> two more to go when we can start tightening things down. But these are the two that were kicking my butt earlier. You so, were saying some few choice words too, huh? I might have said a couple few choice words. <laughs> I don't know who doesn't. If right. you can go through a project like this and not say a few choice words, I'm impressed. I, on the other hand, might occasionally say some not very nice things. Generally not directed at anybody, but... Yeah. Alright, so... Really, once we got it a little bit started, it was just a matter of, um, like the directions say, jack it up, bang on it, jack it up, bang on it, jack it up, bang on it, until you got it all lined up. Um, and it wasn't really that hard once we figured it out. The key thing was loosening those two big bolts off the back of the torsion axle so it can move out and give you a little bit of free freedom. And then just play with it, play with it, play with it. And it was much easier than, than uh, earlier once I took those bolts loose and then tighten everything down super tight. 
and then I went and inspected everything else. So now we should be good. We shouldn't have a lean anymore. Everything should be back together. So it's just a matter of putting the tire on and leveling it back out. Putting the slides out and we'll call it good. So really all in all, replacing one of these springs, if you've got one of these suspensions and you follow the directions, you know, important thing, read the directions and actually follow them, which is not something I'm good at because I usually figure I can figure it out. I would, I would guess, what time is it now? Is it five? Six o'clock, so I didn't really get started till probably two. So two to six is four hours. Uh, if I were to have to do it again, I could probably do it in two hours now that I know everything and I don't have to run to the store to get a tool. So really two hours on each spring and you can replace it. And there's four total, not really that big a deal. Thanks for watching and that was my experience with replacing a spring bushing, spring hanger, I don't know what you want to call it. It's a big rubber bushing that functions as part of the spring uh, on a MoRide independent suspension. Uh, it definitely should make a big difference. We'll see once we uh, have to move this and hook up. We should not have our, our lean. We were leaning a couple inches to the side and like I said earlier on the intro, we we're really lucky that we didn't have a tire blowout or anything like that because uh, once that sheared, really all the weight was sitting on one axle, one wheel on this side. So now I'm going to carry a spare bushing so that if something should happen on the side of the road, I can replace it. I'm actually going to order a bushing set and just have a full set as well as a spare that I've got that's used. So I highly recommend that you carry one just in case this happens out in the middle of nowhere like it did to us. We were lucky. Uh, you may not be that lucky. Maybe next time we won't be that lucky, but it worked out well. So replacing a rubber bushing on a MoRide independent suspension. Have a good one. Hey, thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that was very helpful for you. Uh, you know what I would say. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, hit that subscribe button. We need more subs. And if you already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting our channel. Uh, see you next time.